you guys are gonna get a kick out of this. So I just talked to the guy behind me and he just talked to uh, just one of the DOT boys and we have avalanches on both sides of us. In front of me where I'm trying to go, there's a big avalanche and it avalanched behind me while I was driving here last night. So I'm literally stuck here right now. I can't get out, totally stuck. But you know what the beauty about that is, is I'm home. It's actually pretty chill. I'm just gonna work on some editing. I'm gonna get some coffee going here in a second. I've got uh, about 14 days of food in here if things got serious and uh, I could offer food to dude behind me too. He's not very prepared, so I'm gonna go make him some coffee or something. Let's make some coffee. Let's make some coffee. Most of you guys have probably seen my water system. It's literally just a little hand pump faucet I got for 30 bucks and a tube comes out of this faucet and goes to just a little portable water jug right there, seven gallon jug. That's how I get my water. I always pull this thing out because I forget, I forget this thing's hot, so I always grab it and ah, burn myself with boiling water. And we need a Vietnamese coffee maker. Excuse the mess. You guys wanna see a real camper life? I'm just like, I'm showing it to you right now. This is what it's really like. Coffee cup. I've got some Baileys. I might do a shot of Baileys in my coffee. Whoa. Shot of Baileys in my coffee this morning. I'm gonna stop filming this because no one wants to watch making coffee. Okay, I'll be back with you soon. One time I, oh my God. I dropped, uh, I burned my hand and dropped this whole freaking thing down. We're not gonna do that again though. It's really nice having this fan right above the stove. I did that on purpose so I could turn it on and suck the condensation out whenever I boil water and stuff like that. Wow, look at that ice caked up. The strap's all covered, inches of ice. Couldn't get that off if I wanted to. There's the DOT block in the highway. I just warmed the truck up just so it'd be warm in case I need to take off. Can't see him, but Got some new general grabbers for this thing. They were brand new. Oh, now they're covered in muck. Oh. 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 My little portable power station. This is kind of nice. I'll just plug this in and charge this while I drive. And then this powers a laptop. Laptop's kind of high juice. All right, I'm feeling bad for my neighbor. I'm gonna make him a cup of coffee. I'm not even gonna ask him. It's really good coffee too, so. I don't really have a cup though, so. I had my Starbucks cup that I had the other day. I hate Starbucks, but I couldn't find another coffee place. But I just drank out of the lid, so maybe he won't mind the cup or something. I just got myself a little idea. I'm gonna fly this drone up into the, uh, up into the air, and I'm gonna see if I can see the avalanche and see what's going on. I don't know, it might be really far down the road, but this thing doesn't have a super long range once you're out of line of sight, but let's try it. Well, unfortunately, I flew way up in the air and way down. But as far as I could go, I started losing signal with the GPS. I could not see the avalanche on either side, so it's way down from us. So we're actually at the summit of the pass right now. So here we are. I'm just gonna chill and just be at home. Go bring our neighbor some coffee. That's kind of crazy guys. So the guy behind me I was talking to that I gave coffee, he got here a little bit, like just after me last night and he turned around and tried to go back the other way 
and the avalanche had just happened the other way. So that's kind of nuts. Like when I was sitting there with my transmission overheating and I had to stop in the middle of that avalanche area, that avalanche, I don't know where it is, but that would have been nuts. Like it could have literally been an avalanche right there and not even seen it coming. Pretty crazy. We're about uh, 15 hours in, still sitting here, spent the night. And I talked to uh, the guy I gave the coffee back there. Uh, he was watching me fly the drone too. And uh, he said, uh, the BC had all these crazy floods, which I knew about maybe two months ago. And this is the only way you can't go. There's no other way. Like highway five is closed. Highway one is closed. Like everything going North from the United States into the interior of Canada is closed off except for Whistler and this highway I'm on right now. Uh, other than that, I'd have to go like way over towards Montana or something to get up. So this is pretty nuts. So hopefully if we get this avalanche, uh, mitigated and be on our way. Cool. A raven out the window. I cannot tell you guys how nice it is to have my home right here. <laughs> Just chilling and editing and pretty cool. Taking care of business. I'm working on a video down in Moab right now. Well, I had cell service last night and I didn't have it this morning. Thought that's weird. Turns out the power line got taken out by the avalanche. Lost all cell service. I just talked to this local dude right there in that little geo tracker. And he's saying this isn't gonna be open for like days. So they opened the other side up from the avalanche. So I'm gonna head back that way. Um, good God, hundreds and hundreds of miles out of the way, but that's it, there's literally no other choice. So I'm gonna go talk to the, the DOT dude and get his word and, and head out of here. I guess the road's super sketchy going the other way too. Hey, what's up man? Uh, just checking in to see, uh, should I just turn around? I'm trying to get to Alaska, so. Alaska. Yeah, good a ways to go, but I don't know if I'm better off just heading back the other way at this point, or there is it's still blocked off that way too, or not? Really? Huh. All right, well, thanks for the info, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. All right. That's the word. Shut down for at least 24 hours. It sounds like going that way, maybe longer. Um, I think I'm just gonna pack up and go. Start going down the hill, dude. This is crazy. This is freaking nuts. At least it's not stupid cold, but. I'm literally stranded. This is crazy, but I'm just gonna start going the other way. I don't even know what to do. All right, we're getting out of here. I don't even know what to do. It's gonna be multiple days to talk to someone else and uh, I'm not getting anywhere here. So I'm just gonna head towards Whistler and throw chains in this thing and go up the steep mountains, I guess. Let's uh, see if we can get through going back west. I just hope we can get through whatever's going on. We're gonna creep down this and see what we can do. Let's go. Man, I hope to everything I can get through on this side. We're, uh, you can tell we're in the flats, we're in the saddle, so I'm gonna go down the steep mountain up here, but um, if I need to, I've got chains. Hopefully I don't have to put them on. It's not necessarily the driving conditions themselves that's stopping me right now. It's the freaking road just avalanche and blocked. So let's get out of here before any more avalanches happen. This is why you carry survival gear with you at all times and just be stocked up and prepared, man. We're heading down the mountain pass. It's a little bit sloppy, but once again, this is like, I'm used to driving on snow and ice and crappy stuff. The only stuff that truly scares me is like, super wet slick glaze ice which this isn't this is icy for sure but this is doable even on this steep hill you know look at those little baby avalanches right there try to get the crap off this mountain runaway truck lane this is pretty steep somewhere right in here is where i had to pull off the road last night to let my transmission cool off climbing this uh, through all that deep snow they haven't plowed it but it's getting packed down from people trying to come up here it looks like Oh boy, what now? Let's see if we can get through here. This is so crazy, y'all. This has just been nuts. I can't believe this mess I'm in. I might have to put my tire chains on because uh, now I have to go back to Whistler, which is like really steep and kind of sketchy. So I'm backtracking about, I don't know, this is probably 300 miles out of the way I've driven to do this. in. Not just 300 miles of pavement driving, 300 miles of this kind of driving. Whatever though, as long as we're moving, I do not care. Yeah, you guys check out all these trucks. The 
good news is I just got through. It looks like they cleared the avalanche on the Vancouver side of the road. So at least I didn't have an avalanche on both sides of me anymore. That got taken care of, thank God. So we're heading to Vancouver. Here we go. And that is not what I wanted to see. Route one is closed at Spence's Bridge. I have no idea where that is, but Route one is what we're on. We might still be stuck. Hey, at least I only have uh, 2,500 miles to Alaska. You know what though, what, I mean, I'll always remember this trip, good or bad. It's all worth it for the memories sometimes. This is just crazy, y'all. I mean, there's like, I'm gonna say 10 miles of traffic. I don't even know. It just keeps going. Just absolutely nuts. Hopefully I can get out this way. In all honesty, I was in the best situation yesterday. I kept pushing on and I was one of the first people that got to their road closed pass sign at the top, which is a place that you could turn around and go back this way in the highway. All these other people, they're freaking stuck, man. I mean, there's, there's no way you can't get out. Look at that. I made it to the gas station and hope filled this thing up with some diesel so just in case we get stuck again oh snap Whew, thank god we're moving hopefully this is a uh, going back to the highway we're gonna get through this canyon up here that'll take us to vancouver uh once we go to vancouver we'll just head north to whistler and i'll try to get to alaska that way there's only two highways going to alaska right now the reason i didn't do a whistler originally is because the steep mountain passes and twisty and curvy and i'm probably gonna have to use chains but now i don't have a choice What in God's crap show is this? Uh-oh. Are these guys seriously blocking the north ramp? No freaking way. This isn't good. These guys are blocking the on-ramp up here. These tractor trailers need to be off to one side, not blocking the whole road so people can squeeze by. I just walked up there and there's a semi that was getting on the highway and he got stuck trying to merge onto the highway and he's blocking the, the merge on lane. He's putting chains on his truck. Hopefully he'll be moving. And then if he gets moving, all these other trucks have to get moving and they're not chaining up like they should be right now. So we'll see. Woohoo, we're moving. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, do not get stuck car. No, 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 no. What in the crap? Is this dude stuck in front of us? No, 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 no. This car better not be stuck. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah! We're on the road, bros! All right, that freaking stupid semi got stuck like right up here. I'll show you where. It's, it's kind of a thick chunk of snow. They need to hit this crap with a front end loader or something. Right here he gets stuck where it's all thick. Oh my God. I'm gonna hit it hard. Yeah, son. Oh. Is that dude right there getting chains on? All the truckers have to take their chains off now. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We're going to Vancouver, apparently. Let's do this. Pretty smooth sailing. We're rolling back. You can tell they haven't even plowed the highway. There's just this kind of like driven over lane right there. It's supposed to be two lanes. Slowly getting out of this. These guys are dealing with power lines and stuff. It's a little tricky with that samurai behind me in that trailer. nerve-wracking <laughs> good lord look at all these down trees that happened behind me after i drove due last night we could go around that one it's fixing the power lines fell on the road last night i'm gonna unlock my hubs real quick back on the highway now it's more drivable. and a little bit more chaos a little bit more chaos Nice. Guy did it up proper right there. He's gonna try to get chains. Wow. West for 87 kilometers. I'd say I'm maybe 40 miles east of Vancouver, heading towards Vancouver. Look how good the roads are now. 
That's so crazy what happened last night up there. Oh man, grateful to be here. Well, that's a wrap, y'all. I've still got another 2,500 miles to get to Alaska, so tune in for the next episode, and we'll see what happens next, because it is far from over. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll see you on the next adventure. Peace, y'all.